Could you use a fresh twist on visualization, goal setting, and affirmations? That's what I'm going to give you here on The Creative Entrepreneur, Season 2, Episode 2. Hey, welcome to The Creative Entrepreneur. I'm Bob Baker, your host. As I record this, it's the first few days of January. And uh, man, let me tell you, here in St. Louis in the Midwest, it is freezing this week. It's actually uh, barely getting out of the single digits. Uh, So I'm trying to stay warm and come up with every reason I can to just stay home and stay put and only go out when I have to because it's just too darn cold out there. But regardless of the weather outside, it is the beginning of a new year. And of course, everyone's focused on the fresh start and making a difference and resolutions and blah, blah, blah. And I, too, always like to use the start of a new year to uh, set some new goals and some ambitions and sort of refocus and all that. I mean, throughout my life, uh, I can point out times when it was in a New Year's resolution frame of mind that I came up with a plan that actually, uh, you know, positively impacted my life. And so that's all well and good, but as I get older, sort of my approach uh, and my attitude about this whole goal setting and visualization thing uh, has evolved. And recently there are a couple of aspects to it that I have been tweaking. I've been sort of hacking my approach to goal setting and visualization. I'm going to cover one of them on this episode, and I'm going to cover the other one, another sort of recent aha insight moment that I had uh, on the next episode of The Creative Entrepreneur. But let's get to the nitty gritty of this episode, which has to do with visualization, with goal setting, with affirmations. These are all sort of related things. And let's start off by talking about sort of the classic approach to this stuff. This is even things that I've recommended, things that I've done successfully over the years. But with visualization in particular, and also with affirmations, which are those you know statements that you make about your, your goals and aspirations, the classic advice is to look at it from the end point. In other words, view your goals, your visions, your aspirations that you have for your life, view them from the position of having already accomplished it. I mean, affirmations are supposed to be in the present tense, like, I am now a wealthy and successful author or artist or whatever. And you're not supposed to be writing or speaking them and I will be and about, you know, you're not supposed to be coming at it from an angle of striving or moving toward. You're supposed to think of yourself as already reached that goal to, to feel what it's like to be there, to bask in the glow of having reached your vision. And this is the classic advice on visualization and goal setting and affirmations. And I will tell you that, yes, it's been very effective for me. I've used it uh, many times in my life repeatedly. It's important to sort of see yourself reaching that point. Um, I've often talked about in workshops and so on about this sort of gap between having a clear idea of where you want to end up, being able to see it, feel it clearly, also having an awareness of where you are and the disparity between where you are and where you want to be, and then the whole process of getting there is closing that gap between where you are and where you want to be. But I've been exposed to a couple of things lately that opened my eyes to something that I was aware of and something that I you know, did and preached about, but it's sort of this gained some additional clarity that I want to share with you today that I think will be very, very helpful in uh, the journey of you moving toward your own goals and aspirations. While it's great to be able to view your goals from the position of having already attained them, there's a missing piece to it. One way to illustrate this was uh, several years ago, I was at a Jack Canfield week-long workshop called Breakthrough to Success. It's back in 2008. And there was a woman who stood up during this Q&A section and she asked Jack about affirmations. And she said that, you know what, I affirm over and over uh, that I am physically fit. I think of myself as a supermodel. I'm real thin and I'm in great shape and I see myself so strongly. And in fact, I believe it so much that I eat whatever I want because I'm already so real thin and healthy. (laughs) And everybody cracked up, including Jack. 
and it points out a potential flaw with the seeing things and visualizing things as if you've already achieved it philosophy, and that is it's missing the steps that you have to take to close the gap. And so there are a couple of different sources that I heard from lately. One, there's a book called The Miracle Morning. It's by an author named Hal Elrod, and I heard him actually, he was interviewed on Pat Flynn's Smart Passive Income podcast, and just very inspiring interview. This guy has a great story. I won't go into the details, but maybe I'll link to uh, Pat's interview with him in the show notes. But I'm pretty sure it was during that interview that Hal pointed out that in addition to visualizing yourself having reached the goal, it's equally and maybe even more important to also visualize yourself engaged in the steps and the actions that it's going to take to get there. And for me, the light bulb immediately went off and said, yeah, well, of course, because I've done visualization where I'm in affirmations where I did it in the present tense as if I had already reached the goal. And then based on that sort of inspiration and clear vision, then I would come up with plans. But I never actually visualized myself engaged in the activities. And I've been doing this lately and I find it to be extremely helpful. For instance, one of my goals this year uh, is to just crank out a lot more information products in different formats, particularly online courses. I'm kind of going a little crazy now uh, with plans to create a lot more of those. I got already like seven or eight of them up on a website called Udemy. I also want to do more audio books. And so when I ask myself, okay, I see myself, you know, with all of these products, I see the raving reviews from students, I see the income and the orders coming in my email inbox. I see all that stuff and I know how it feels. And that is a great vision to shoot for. But when I ask myself, well, what's it going to take to get there? I realize that I need to be engaged in things that I'm good at, things like writing, things like recording audio, like I'm doing now designing PowerPoint slides for the uh, videos that go along with my online courses, editing those things, designing book covers, and so on. I mean, that's really the nitty-gritty work. That's the activity. That's the behavior modification that I've got to incorporate into my life in order to make that vision a reality. And that is the missing part for far too many people. They will visualize, they'll see the end goal, and then... They sort of just let it go and let things happen. And there's actually advice out there that I've even given myself where you're not supposed to focus so much on the how things are going to get done. I even have an original song that I wrote that I've talked about. We're in the bridge of the song. There's a line that goes, focus on the what, focus on the why, but don't get stuck in the how. And I do believe that, but with a little bit of, of nuance here. When you have a goal, you do need to focus and know exactly what that thing is. What are you trying to accomplish? You know, what is the physical product or the state or whatever that you're going to end up with? And why is a huge part of that? What's your motivation? What's the reason you're doing this? And the more passionate and emotional you are about that reason why you're going to create that thing, the more powerful it is. And the reason that you don't get stuck in the how is because a lot of people, when they come up with a vision, they don't know the route there. They don't, they've never done this before. And so they let the lack of knowing how paralyze them. And so that's what I mean is don't get stuck in the how because you don't know what those steps are. However, that doesn't mean don't take action or don't come up with a plan or don't start moving toward it. Not at all. And that's the missing piece with this visualizing with the end in mind. That's the drawback about it. And so I encourage you to, in addition to visualizing or setting goals, to actually see yourself in the act of doing the things that are going to move you toward manifesting that goal. And you have to add emotion and feeling and intensity to these visualizations that you do. And so for me, a big part of manifesting my goals is actually sitting my butt in a chair or in a stand-up desk and writing. I mean, being engaged in writing. So what I do is I visualize myself in the act of writing. And I think back on those times, which there have been many of over the years, where I'm in the zone, I'm in the flow, time stands still. 
It's just like pouring out of me and my fingers can't type fast enough to get all the ideas down. And I'll write down something. And I'll go, wow, oh, this is going to blow people away. And so I've had many of those experiences while writing and getting stuff down and typing it over the years. And so I focus on that and, and, and enjoying that state. Same thing with recording audiobooks. I imagine myself sitting in front of a microphone like I am now and the words just flowing out and being perfect intonation and pacing and all that good stuff. And so this is a completely different way of affirming and visualizing your success is when you see yourself in the act, because it's all about the action that you take. It's about how is this vision going to change or upgrade your behavior? Because vision without a change or at least an upgrade, an enhancement in your actual behavior, the stuff that you do in the 3D day-to-day world, you might not get there without it. So I hope this makes sense to you. I hope this is helpful. I'm going to try to keep this episode short and maybe just wrap it up here because I think I have made the point here. So whether you're listening to this or setting goals at the beginning of the year or it doesn't matter if it's in May or September or whenever it is, be very clear about your goals and where you're headed. Have a vision Close your eyes and imagine yourself being already there. Write affirmations about the state that you're going to reach when you get there. But in addition to that, visualize and affirm how much you're going to enjoy and be eager to engage in the actual activities that are going to move you towards that. Ask yourself, what am I going to have to do on a daily or weekly basis to be able to reach that goal and make that thing happen and see yourself doing that and enjoying the process and being enthused about it, whatever that is. All right, would love to know uh, what you think. So wherever you're consuming this, leave a comment somewhere if you're on my website. Another thing that would be really cool if you could rate and post a review of this podcast on iTunes or Stitcher or wherever you're getting it from. That would help other people find it and uh, enjoy it as well. Let's not keep it amongst ourselves. And as I mentioned earlier, I plan on uh, creating more audiobooks. And just recently, the DIY Career Manifesto was published on Amazon and Audible and the iTunes Bookstore as an audiobook, spoken word. And also, Branding Yourself Online was a, a book that is now available in audio format. So if those speak to you, go search Amazon or Audible or the iTunes bookstore for those titles. And I think you just might get some further inspiration from them. All right, that's it for this episode. I'm going to be back next time uh, with my other little new twist on results and how to deal with failure. And it's all kind of tied into goal setting and making things happen and making your life better. All right, thanks for listening. This is Bob Baker saying so long for now.